Hello dear friends, this is Ewell Humphreys. I'm glad to be back with you to share another word with you from the Bible and on the Bible Reflections. Just about a 10 minute message and I share with you right here in my study in my home. I hope it'll be a word for you. I'm speaking today to you on the matter of the church being important. The church is very important. The church is the body of Christ and therefore it is important. I hope that I'm speaking to people who have joined the church, you've been baptized, and you're following Christ. Whatever denomination it may be, as long as you've joined the church, I believe in Jesus Christ, and you're a member of a church that believes the Bible and preaches the Word, lifts up Jesus, and is dependent on the Holy Spirit. This makes a good church, whatever denomination name it may go by. So I find in the Word of God, that number one, there are actually a universal church, and then there is a local church. And the universal church is made up of all Christians. And it, it's comprised of what the Bible said, the body of Christ. Christ is the head, and the church is his body. The Bible says over in Ephesians, uh, the uh, uh, first chapter of Ephesians, it, it says that we are... <coughs> we are, are <coughs> Uh, that God has raised up Christ from the dead and set, seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and uh, every title that can be given not only in this present age but also in the one to come and God has placed all things under his feet and has appointed Christ to be head over everything in the church which is his body the fullness of which fills everything. So you see, the Bible says that God has raised up Jesus, set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers, and that he, that his, uh, that his, that everything has been put under his feet, and that he has put, made the head over everything to his church, which is his body. It's his body. The same word is it found over in First uh, Corinthians where it says the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were baptized by one spirit into one body, which is Christ. Whether we be Gentiles, Greeks, or slaves, or free, and we're made to be given the to drink of one spirit to drink. And so there is one body. Christ is the head. The universal church is made up of every all Christians. And then there is the local church. The local church is a church uh, in, in certain denominations. There's a Baptist church, there's a Methodist church, there's the you know, Presbyterian church, the Catholic church, and there's other churches, the non-denominational churches, Assembly of God churches, Church of Christ, all kinds of churches, denominations, but they're in Christ and they are a, a part of the body of Christ, but they're local churches. And so the local churches are units within the universal church. So I want you to praise God, believe and know that the Lord is with his people. And so we need to see and recognize that the church is all so important. What is the purpose of the church? The purpose is to glorify God, is to glorify Jesus Christ and magnify the Lord. The church is to glorify God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son. The Bible says in the book of uh, Ephesians in the third chapter, verse 20, Now to him who is able to do more than we can ask or even imagine, according to his power that's at work within us, to him, to God, be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all generations, world without end. Amen. And so, to God be the glory through Christ in His church, world without end. And so the church is important as it glorifies God, magnifies the Lord. What is the purpose of the church? Well, the purpose is to magnify the Lord. It's also the purpose is to win souls. Jesus said as He ascended, Go ye and make disciples, and then baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then teach them all things I have commanded you. So this is important that we reach people and bring them into Christ and then try to get them into the body. Now the church does not save. People that are 
born again are born again through faith in Christ when they repent of their sins and believe in Jesus as their Lord, they are born again and become the children of God. Then after they're saved, they need to become members of the church and to be baptized. Baptism does not save anybody. Baptism simply relates the fact that you are saved and that you're obeying the command of the Lord. But a person is not saved by joining a church. The church was not that which hung upon the cross. <clears throat> Jesus alone hung on that cross and paid for our sins. The blood of Christ alone atones for us and God forgives us because somebody has paid for our sins and that's Jesus. When we're saved by grace in Him, we're born again and we become His child and then we join a church and find His will and walk with Him. We join a church because it's good for us. Let us hold together the hope we profess. Oh, we have a hope, Christians. We hold that hope together. And we re rejoice and reveal it when we come together and worship together in the church. <clears throat> For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And so we, we encourage others. And we encourage others by attending church. And when we go to church and we sing the songs of old hymns together and praise the name of God together, it strengthens all of us. And when we hear the message of the Word of God and share the Word of God in Bible study, it strengthens all of us. It helps all of us as church members. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. But even let us encourage one another and much more since you see the day of Christ approaching. And so we are not to 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 uh, uh, to forget it to uh, to uh, to uh, discourage others, and that we are not to give up meeting together. We need to come together and meet together on on the Lord's day to worship God, or whenever we worship God in Jesus Christ, we need to come together and worship Him together, and 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 not not drop off and become. Uh, you know, tardy and wayward in our church attendance because we need to be faithful, especially since we know that Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. We need to be faithful. Need to be faithful. I like the story told about the preacher who was called on the telephone back several years ago and somebody said, uh, I understand that the President of the United States is supposed to be at your church today. Is that right? I mean, uh, tomorrow, Sunday. I understand the president, our president, is supposed to be in church tomorrow, in your church. And the preacher said, well, I don't know for sure about that. But one thing I am convinced of, the Lord God should be here. And he's worth your coming to see and to worship. Amen. We don't know of any dignitary that's going to be in our church, but we know the Lord God is there. He is there. He will not leave his people. He will be there for us to worship together and sit at His feet and hear His word, sing His praise, and love His name. And so praise God for the church. The church is so important, my dear friends, and I want you to know that it's important. Over in the book of, of uh, Mark in the 16th chapter, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the good news uh, to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And so he says, go into all the world and preach, teach, and baptize. So we need to spread the good news. We need to get people saved and in the kingdom of God. And then after we get them in the kingdom of God, we need to get them into the church where they can bloom and blossom and grow and become stronger Christians and help others and win others to the Lord. This is the purpose of the church. And the church is so important. God bless you. The church is so important. I remember, in closing, a little church that I attended one day years ago, and I was in my uh, teen, I was I was in living in my mother and dad's house, and I was lying in bed one Sunday morning, and I was sick unto death. I had been out for several years in the darkness of sin, walking in darkness, but I had been saved when I was a boy, ten years of age, and anyway, I got away from him. And I fell off that morning on my bed because right down behind our house was a little church. And it was called a Skyline Heights Baptist Church. 
It was in Dallas, Texas. And there, that little church was meeting, and the songs came through that window where I was lying. The old hymns, the old hymns. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, saved a wretch like me. And I lay there in the bed, and I felt like I was just about to die. I fell off on my knees, and I said, Lord God, if you can love someone who loved you once, if you can have mercy on somebody that really loved you once and got away, have mercy on me now. Forgive me and help me. And praise God. I'll never forget it. I just began to feel better. The burden lifted. I could breathe again. And I got up and I was feeling good. And I said, praise God. Hallelujah. A little out of time after that, I went to that little church, joined it. Spent several years there. And I was ordained a deacon there. Finally, I surrendered to preach in that little church. And I was ordained by that church to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Many, many years ago, I've been preaching 62 years. Praise God for that little Skyline Heights Baptist Church. Church. It meant so much to my life. And it'll mean much to your life when you get in a church where God will bless your life and you will be a blessing in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.